In the second ayah of Surah Al-Hujurat 49, Allah Azza wa Jal describing one of the rights that the Prophet has over us, alayhi salatu wa salam. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu, la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawtin nabi. Those of you who claim to believe, don't raise your voices above the voice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wala tajharu lahu bil qawl. And don't you call with your loud voices onto him, like kajahri ba'dikum ba'dan, aw ba'dikum li ba'dan, just like you call each other. And tahbata a'malukum, that all of your good deeds will be taken away will come for nothing. وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ And you won't even realize. Let's understand the context of this ayah a little bit, okay? You have uh, some people who became Muslim, and they were Bedouins, uh, and they weren't really civilized in the ways of city life, much less the etiquette of Islam. They kind of know the Prophet ﷺ is a messenger, but there's this idea of honoring him and showing him the proper respect, they're not really cultured with that. So they come to his apartment, and his apartment is really, really small. And they knock on the door, and they say, Ya Muhammad, اُخْرُجْ alayna." Muhammad, come out, we gotta ask you some questions. Now, the thing is, Allah Himself does, never calls the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Muhammad. Allah Himself has so much respect for Rasulullah ﷺ, He calls him, Ya Ayyuhal Nabi, Ya Ayyuhal Muzammil, Ya Ayyuhal Muddathir, Ya Ayyuhal Rasul. And even when Muhammad comes up, He says, Muhammadun Rasulullah, Mubashiran bi Rasulin min ba'di, Ismuhu Ahmad. You know, ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله. When Muhammad is mentioned, Rasul is mentioned. Muhammad is mentioned, Rasul is mentioned. And the only time Allah does not mention the word Rasul, the title with the word Muhammad, is Surah Muhammad, where Allah highlighted the name itself. والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وآمنوا بما نزل على محمد وهو الحق من ربهم. And there's a, a whole other reason for that. Why I mention his name specifically without even Rasul? But Allah never calls his messenger. You know, he called Ya Adam. Uskun anta wa zawjuk al-jannah. Ya Dawood. He called Dawood. When you say Ya in Arabic, you're calling someone. Ya Zakariya, inna nubashiruka bi ghulam. Ya Isa, inni mutawafika wa rafi'uka ilayya. Ya Musa, inna ni an Allah. La ilaha illa ana. Every single prophet, Ya, 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 Ya. When it comes to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there's no Ya Muhammad, there's no Ya Ahmad. There's Ya Ayyuhan Nabi, Ya Ayyuhan Rasul. Now can you imagine these Bedouins came out and they're knocking on the door and they're saying, Ya Muhammad, ukhruj alayna. Allah is so offended at this idea that He reveals this ayah to teach the Muslims a piece of etiquette. Number one, never raise your voice above the voice of the Prophet. In other words, you should remember how the Prophet used to speak. And so when, he, when you speak to him, you never raise your voice above him. Now we'll talk about its, its contemporary applications in a second. But I want to go to the second part first. وَلَا تَجْهَرُوا لَهُ بِالْقَوْلِ Don't you call him like you call each other. Hey bro! Hey man! Hey Naman! Come here for a second. Don't you call him like that. Because if you do, and تَحْبَطَ أَعْمَالُكُمْ All of your good deeds are seized, they're taken away, they're multiplied by zero. I don't care if you were at Badr, I don't care if you were at Uhud, I don't care if you were the, the, one of the best Sahaba ever. It, none of that matters. All of your sacrifices don't matter. These are Sahaba being talked about. If you raise your voice at the Prophet, and you call him like you call anybody else, none of your good deeds count. And you won't even realize it. وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ You can make hajj all you want. You do Umrah all you want, you can recite Qur'an all you want. Honoring the Messenger of Allah وسلم, is such a fundamental part of our religion that if you don't give it its due, none of your Islam counts. It's not a small thing in Islam. It's one of the big deals in Islam. Now, what does it mean to not raise our voice in our time? Obviously at their time it's understandable. But what about our times? How do we not raise our voice above the voice of the Prophet I'll give you a practical example. You're discussing something with a brother or a sister. And they mention a hadith. Now maybe this person isn't qualified to be quoting a hadith, but they do. They say Bukhari says this, and that there's a hadith in Bukhari, there's a hadith in Muslim, there's a hadith in the Ibn Majah, or you know, Abi Dawood, or some book of hadith, they quote something from the Prophet Now, maybe you and he are both college students. And you're both not qualified to be really discussing the authenticity of a hadith, you're not muhaditheen. But since you even heard there's a remote possibility that what this guy is saying is actually from the Prophet ﷺ, and even if it's use, he's using it in an incorrect context, he's misusing the hadith, until you know better, lower your opinion and say, I can't say anything, you just said a hadith. You're right. I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna look it up further, but until then I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna back off. In other words, you don't get into a spitting match about, oh yeah, this hadith? Well, what about that hadith? You know what, this hadith? What about that hadith? No, 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 no. It's not a contest. You let it go. Just out of regard of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just let it go. Don't, don't say anything. You know? I was praying one time, and you know, a certain way, and a brother next to me was really angry when I was praying. 
And when we finished, when I finished praying, he said, I said, Salaamu Alaikum to him. You're not supposed to say Salaam after Salat. It's against the Sunnah. And I was like, okay, sorry. And he says, you prayed incorrectly. Your hands were in the wrong place. They were supposed to be over here, because there's a hadith. Now I've studied that hadith, and I know what it means, but I, you know what I told him? You're right. I said, I'm sorry. That's it. I let it go. Why? Because I don't want to turn a hadith into an argument. I love my Rasul too much, alayhi salatu wasalam, for his, his words to be used to further my pride or somebody else's, or to engage in a, in a debate. I just don't think it's right. I just, I, it doesn't feel right. So just not raising our voices, not allowing the words of the Prophet ﷺ to become part of ugly, dirty debates and arguments. Researching is a separate, separate issue. Critiquing at a scholarly level is a separate issue. Most of us aren't scholars. Most of us aren't, aren't researchers. So when you just hear the word of the Prophet ﷺ, out of respect for it, just back off. Let your opinion go. Until you find out better. Sometimes there are hadith, you read them in translation, and you say, how does that make any sense? Why would he say that? Why would he do that? Learn to humble yourself. We're talking about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If he did it, there has to be a reason. And by the way, if he did it, there is no better deed than what he does. There is no more reasonable a behavior than his behavior. This is what we believe about our Messenger wasallam. He is not subject to any criticism, much less yours and mine. Lower your opinion before the, the actions and the sayings of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. May Allah azza wa make us of those who truly honor him, and by doing so, all of our deeds are protected. Hey.